How many people identify with Martha? Raise your hand if you identify with Martha. And how many people identify with Mary? And how many people don't identify? That's okay, too. Um, I think what's important about this scripture is that too many people, too many of us think of ourselves as Martha and think of ourselves as um, if nobody else does this, I've got to do this and that type of a thing. And um, what Jesus says to Martha is not, um, you need to be more like your sister Mary, which is what we sometimes do to each other. You be like Mary. Jesus is trying to show both women that there's a part, that there's a balance that needs to be had. Because Mary, Amato, it sounds like they just showed up. And what would it be like if Jesus just showed up at your house? You know, would you be rushing all around? I can see you, Linda. You'd be cleaning everything up. <laughs> and he wouldn't see any of the things in your house. He wants to have a relationship with you. And, and we want you to know that. We want you to know that. That's why we've had this gathering. We want you to know that Jesus wants an intimate relationship with you. And all you need to do is to take the time to form that relationship. And that's what we try to provide tonight, is a, is a place where you could just think about it. Now, I don't know how you think about Jesus and, and whether you think he's God or whether you don't think he's God. I don't, I'm not going to get into that. But I will tell you about what happened to me when I was with a bunch of different people from different religions and we were trying to decide after 9-11 how we could all um, honor each other. And the Buddhist woman raised her hand and she said, well, I don't believe that Jesus is God, but I do believe he had some good ideas. And couldn't we talk about those ideas? And everyone shook their head, yes. And I'm sitting there thinking, now if I, the Christian pastor, had brought this up, everybody would have been suspect. But because it was brought up by someone else, and we could look at Jesus in that way. And so we just, we just wanted you to come together tonight and and have a discussion and think about what happened in the scripture. So I'm going to get off the mic, and you're going to sit here in your little groups, and I want you to have a discussion with each other. And I want you to answer the question, do you think, I asked um, Ken what he thought about the scripture, he said, well, actually, I feel really bad for Martha, I think she got a bad for do you think Martha got a bad rap? And what do you think Jesus was trying to show with this story and with the way that he spoke to the two women? Because the best part that Martha was after was the intimate relationship. So one last story. A father was in his office and he's doing his work. And he's so preoccupied. And he's at his desk. And his little girl, about Katie's age, comes in and stands there quietly. And he can feel his eyes just peering in on him. And he, he turns to her and he says, what do you want? Can't you see I'm busy? And she said, mom told me if I came in here, you would give me a hug and a kiss before I had to go to bed. And he said, get over here. And he gave her a peck on the cheek and he gave her a little bit of a hug and then let her go and went back to the work. And he's sitting there and he can feel these eyes still in the back of his head. And he turns around and she has not moved. And he says to her, Kid, I gave you a kiss. I gave you a hug. What more do you want? And she looked at him and she said, Dad, you weren't in it. So how many times are we not in it? That's the other. How many times are we not in it? Mama was so in preparing, and we were so in preparing for this. And I'm saying, oh gosh, are we going to be in it? Are we going to be in it? And we really want to be in it. Okay? 
So have a nice conversation. And it's perfectly all right to disagree with the pastor and say, I think she's crazy. Thank you.